Amen. 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 Glory to God. Father, today we give you glory. Lord, we honor your name. Father, I thank you today that you are the Lord God and that there is none besides you. There is none above you, God. Hallelujah. Ah, there is none like unto our God. And so, Spirit of the living God, as I place myself, God, at your feet, Father, I say, have your way. Not my will, not my words, God. But your will and your word go forth in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray today, God, that your seeds, the seeds fall. God, that they fall on good soil. I thank you for rich soil. Father, I thank you that you make it good today. Father God, that seeds would grow. We thank you. We thank you for growth today, God. And we thank you for maturity. And Father, we thank you for good fruit. Father, let fruit come forth. Father, out of this word today, in the name of Jesus, God, I say once more, not my will, but yours be done. In Jesus' name. Amen. For a few minutes, I don't know if I'm going to be before you long, but... Uh, <laughs> Hallelujah. From the book of Galatians. The sixth chapter. I'm just going to read into your hearing. Yes, sir. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such and one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. Let him that is taught in the word. Let me say that again. Let him that is taught in the word. Communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. But I just want to focus on the two verses, verses 6 and 7, which says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked, for whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap, but reap corruption. But he that soweth the, of the spirit shall of the spirit reap life. 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 Everlasting. Anybody in the house want to reap today? If you want to reap life everlasting, I suggest to you that you sow in the spirit. And so the Lord said to me today, to, take, to, to say to the people, be not deceived. Be not deceived. Amen. Be not deceived. As I lay a foundation, I want you to look in the book of Matthew, the fourth chapter. I'm going to have a few scriptures for you today. Matthew, the fourth chapter. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, 
Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake. For they were fishermen. Mm -hmm. Come follow me, Jesus said. And I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and they followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee preparing their nets. Jesus called them. And immediately, the Bible says, they left the boat and their father. And they followed him. Skip over to Matthew 8. And 18, it says, when Jesus saw the crowd around him, he gave orders to cross to the other side of the lake. Then a teacher of the law came to them and said, teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. Mm -hmm. Now, Jesus didn't say anything to him. He came forward to Jesus. So Jesus replied, listen, listen, foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the son of man has no place to lay his head. Jesus warned him, listen, brother. You come to me and you say you're going to follow me, but let me know. Let me let you know right, right now. And before you even take this on, brother, uh -huh, let me let you know what you're getting yourself into. Right. So another disciple said to him, Lord, first let me go and bury my father, Jesus. But Jesus told him, follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. So you may say, well, Elder, what does this have to do? Or what do these, these verses of scripture have to do about being deceived? I'm just laying a foundation today. Right? I want us to understand that when these men were chosen as disciples, or when they came forth wanting to be disciples, one scripture said immediately, Mm -hmm. so, so I said to myself once they made that decision whatever it was that was occupying their time or whatever it was that they were, were, were bound to in life there was a change yeah. wow yeah. immediately Matthew 4 says, says uh, it says Jesus said to them, when they were casting the net into the lake, come follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for men. The word said, at once. <laughs> One of them said, not now, Lord, I like, have mercy on me, Jesus, man. You know, we always have a little story. Of, Father, just tired. Mm. Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. Yeah, I did think Jesus was a bit cold. My Lord Jesus. <laughs> I say it to you because being who I am, I would say I understand. Yeah. <laughs> but Jesus knew what was before him. Right? He knew the responsibility. He knew the task. There was a work that was set out before him. And so as a disciple or a follower of Christ, the 12 disciples of Jesus were sent on a mission to spread the gospel. As Jesus' disciples, they learned from him and passed on their teachings to others. And so today, we as disciples are to do the same. We do the same. And we, we even call ourselves evangelists, but evangelists has, has a, a, a more strict a goal, a focus, which is bringing souls into the kingdom. And then we have the ministers. Yeah. Right? But I want us to focus right there just for a minute as ministers. As I started to think about as a minister, a minister is, is, is found in the dictionary and it's a noun and a verb. Right? Uh -huh. Yeah, because of the title, we are a person, we are a, 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 a nouns, right? We are members of a clergy, but as a verb, we also are Tend to the needs of others. 
Come on, ministers of the gospel. Yes. Yes. We are members of clergy. Yeah, yeah. I, I look good when I got all my, my, my outfit. Yeah. Yeah, I look, look all, all sanctified. Yes. <laughs> Glory to God. But we are also yes. attendees yes. to the needs of others. Here, here's where I just want to rest a few minutes up. Because the Lord says we're busy, but we're busy about what? And this is really where I started because, you know, in 2023, we know social media is a big thing. And so you would go on Facebook or you would go on Instagram and you would see this one posting this scripture, telling a story about their life or sharing an experience. But a lot of times, I don't know about you, but for me, it just seems that the motives are impure. But, but so I say, oftentimes we find ourselves awfully busy. Uh -huh. So we're busy posting this story and we're busy sharing what just happened and, uh, and we're busy saying, oh God just did this, but what is our motive? What are we busy about? Oh, my Lord. My Lord. When Jesus was little, his parents couldn't find him because he left. As they left, he went into the temple. And the word says when Mary and Joseph looked in, they thought he was with family. But they, they couldn't find him. They went back to Jerusalem. For three days, they looked for Jesus, the Bible says. And they found him in the temple. So Mary said to Jesus, you have us worried like we are looking for you in sorrow, son. We cry and I'm all about looking for you. Jesus said, I'm about my father's business. What are we busy about? I say to us today, be not deceived. Because God is not mocked. It's not pristine scripture, it's Galatians. Glory to God. Today we have a responsibility as ministers of the gospel. As disciples, we have the responsibility to remain true to the word of God. We have the responsibility to be true to what God says. Hallelujah. There is a line, you see, a thin line uh, between uh, what God says, what he taught, uh, and what we know. There is a line. And if you don't see the line, you have to draw a line. What line are you talking about? What are you talking about, Elder? Because a lot of times we go by our opinions, our opinions. Or, uh, or I think. Or I feel. But the word of God says, for he that soweth to his flesh, I think of what the word says, be not deceived. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I remember growing up in the Anglican school, we would go to a, a service, an assembly every Wednesday. And being from Zion's Hill, it took me some years to learn the routine, the way of the service, the scripture. But there was one scripture that stuck with me. And I kept saying it because we said it every Wednesday. I say for six years. But it wasn't until I, um, it wasn't until I received the Holy Spirit mm -hmm, that it really started to make sense. That's when the light went up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We deceive, we deceive ourselves. Yes. Yes. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, the word says, and the truth is not in us. One day when the Holy Spirit brought that scripture to me, I started to search myself. And that was the purpose, I believe, of that scripture. <laughs> To keep you on point, baby, yeah. because your head could get swelled. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. Yeah. And so what we have to do, 
Firstly is we have to die to self. Die to self. And as ministers live to serve. Die to self. And live to serve. So as I started to think about being busy, being busy, I said, God, what would you say? And he said, go back to the beginning. He said, go back to the beginning. So I went into the book of Genesis. So you can jot this scripture down. Genesis 3 says, now the serpent was more crafty. Actually, let me start with Genesis 1. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals. Listen to this. And over all the creatures that move along the ground. Precursor. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them male and female. He created them. Verse 28 says, God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over, precursor, the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. I want you to keep that in mind. That moves on the ground. So in verse 26, the Trinity made their plans. They were discussing. Mm -hmm. We're going to make man in, in our image and in our likeness. And in verse 28, he spoke it and it became manifested. Secondly, he said, wait, 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 one minute. God blessed his creation first. Then he gave instructions. One, be fruitful and increase in number. Two, fill the earth and subdue it. Subdue means to conquer. Subdue means to defeat. Subdue means to gain the upper hand. And thirdly, he said rule over it. I want you to remember that. Subdue and rule over. But in chapter 2, the Lord God took the man. We know, we know the scripture. And he put him in the garden of Eden. He put him there to work it, the word says. He put it there to work it and to take care of it. But here now in verse 16, chapter 2, the Lord God commanded. He didn't just say, but he commanded the man. You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat from it, you will certainly die. The Lord said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make him a helper. But this is the part that really got me. He said he's suitable for him. I said to myself, God... Adam was all right. He was just lonely. <laughs> and we know the Bible. It was Eve. Tell the story. It was Eve. Yeah, Apostle. It's true. <laughs> Women grab a hold of it. It is true and accept it. It was Eve. But Apostle, the word says Eve was suitable. That's right. Come on. That's right. Come on. <laughs> Amen. He said he was suitable. God was, he was looking out for him. He said, it's not good for the man to be alone. I will make him a helper suitable for him. God commanded, which is an authoritative order, compared to an instruction, which is order giving more assistance, but it's not as authoritative. What are you saying? In verse 26, of Genesis 1, God just gave the instruction. Be fruitful, subdue, rule over. 
Those were the instructions. But further down, he commanded, which was the difference. Do not eat from this tree. Right, right. Yes. Right. Over in verse 3 of the third chapter, now the serpent was more crafty. We're talking about being deceived. The serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The serpent asked this question, but he asked the woman. Which said to me, God had to, when God spoke it, he spoke it to Adam. Then he made Eve, which means that Adam shared the instruction with Eve. So she was as, just account, as accountable because she was suitable. <laughs> she was just as accountable because she had gotten the word. She received the instruction. Did God really say? How many of us question or ask that question today? Did God really say? Anybody out there believing for something and sometimes you get to the point you say, did God, did God really say that? <laughs> Minister just say, God say bigger. <laughs> Minister, I asked myself this question just this morning, God really? You, say, you, sh you sure? Because God looked like big and wicked, but you talking about bigger. Come on, somebody tell the truth. The woman said to the serpent, you may eat from the tree in the garden, but God did say, you must not eat fruit from that tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or you will die. You will not certainly die. What did God say? Do not be deceived. What did God say, Sister Benita? Do not be deceived. There are 24 hours in a day, seven days in a week, that we have to walk out and believe in faith what God said. Sometimes you're up in the middle of the night and you're wondering, if, did God really say this? God, is this really what you have for me, God? Is this really what you're going to do for me, God? Is this really what you're doing? you will not certainly die. <laughs> God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God. Mm. Knowing good and evil. <laughs> when I thought about that, so you're saying to me that when God made Adam and Eve, they did not know good and evil. But they were just all right. They were created with everything that they needed. <laughs> God made a way and he made provision. He even made provision for them to sustain themselves. I want you to think about that. Because a lot of times we question what it is that God has given us. A lot of times we question who it is that God has called us to be. A lot of times we have to close our ears to what it is the enemy is saying. Because we have to realize that the enemy cannot tell the truth. We take it so lightly. We say, oh, the devil is a liar. What? what? The devil is a liar. Yeah, we say it so so, so, yeah, so loosely and it just rolls out of our mouths without the belief behind it. Now, if the devil is a liar, that means nothing he says is true. Can I help somebody today? So the next time you say the devil is a liar, you better know what it is that 
to say it. Right at that point, you shut him down if you have the belief behind it. Amen. 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 <laughs> so when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree, I just want you to listen to this piece right here. <laughs> when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food, that's what God put it there for. But listen to this. And pleasing to the eye. And pleasing to the eye. And also desirable for gaining wisdom. She took some of it and she ate it. She also gave some to her husband. He ate it and the word says that their eyes were both open. She saw that it was pleasing to her eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom. Can I go back to the scripture? The word says about showing to the flesh. And what will you reap? Corruption. Here is now Eve reaping corruption. So be careful of that thing which satisfies your flesh. Be careful of that thing that satisfies your flesh. Be careful of that which you desire. Be careful of that serpent whispering sweet nothings in your ear. Mighty God. Be not deceived. Be not deceived. Can I help us ministers and leaders out? The Holy Spirit can creep in so suddenly. You have your friend again. Yeah, you could pray better than all. You could sing. I love. I rather listen to you anyway. I prefer the devil is alive, and the truth ain't in it. The word. Is the word. Amen. As long as you are preaching the unadulterated gospel, All right now. my ears are keen. Mm -hmm. That's just how we miss out on some stuff that God has yes. for us yes. because of our preference. All right. Mm -hmm. So you prefer uh -huh, to please your flesh. Uh -huh. And because your flesh is pleased, you miss. Uh, and so you sow your, to your flesh and you reap corruption. There's so much corruption in the body of Christ today because we are so into the flesh and not to the spirit. Be not deceived, for God is not mocked. Be not deceived. The word of God says, so unto the spirit of God. So to your spirit. So to your spirit. And you shall reap life. Life everlasting. The life that he died that you might have. And that you might have it more abundantly. He died that you might have life. So why so to the flesh? As he said, go back to the beginning. And so what were the repercussions of Eve summoning to her flesh death? No, it wasn't a physical death. But they were separated now from God. That's it. And there were there was a penalty, penalties that they had to pay. Even now. Yes, sir. Today. Still. From the beginning. From generation to generation. Don't tell me only the blessings passed down so to the curses. Galatians 5 and 6, 7 says, For the flesh lusted against the spirit. And the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other. So that ye cannot do the things that he would. Be not deceived. Be not beguiled. Do not be ensnared. 
regardless of the crafty and convincing works of the enemy, stay true to what God said. Stay true to what he told you. Eve was put in the place of dominion From her very creation, she and Adam were put in a place of dominion. But she was still ensnared by that which she ruled over. You have to maintain your position. God gave her dominion. We have dominion. We have power. We have authority through the Spirit. And we will reap by the Spirit of God so that we will have life. Hallelujah. And not reap corruption. My God. My God. Through the Spirit. Come on. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Do not be deceived. I don't know if you realize, but there is a height in the realm of the spirit. It seems to be busy, busy, busy. Anybody else realize? There's a busyness in the realm of the spirit. But I want you to remember in November of 2022 the Lord said from this very pulpit, pulpit uh, that in the next few months uh, there was going to be a lot of distraction. Yes. not deceived. I did a little research on deception or being deceived and a large body of research identifies three major reasons why people lie. To get something they want so-called instrumental reasons. Mm -hmm. Just a little white lie. <laughs> right. <laughs> to protect or promote themselves and to harm others. To get something you want Can I get you to check yourselves today? What do you do when you want something? What is it that your flesh is longing or desiring for? What is it that you are chasing after that is unlike God? Are you deceiving yourself? Are you deceiving others? Are your ways deceptive? The enemy is still crafty and cunning. As he was from the beginning. So beware of these distractions. <laughs> these desires. These longings, mm -hmm. these things that we want. Mm -hmm. And I will clarify that there is nothing wrong with wanting to have nice things. There's, there's, there's no things, but we have to prioritize. So you go and buy a new dress when you get your salary before you pay your tithes? Question. <laughs> I pay tithes. I believe in paying tithes. Flat out. 
you know, because yes. that was another distraction just a few months ago. Right. Yes. Right. Speaking of distractions. Yes. But I learned one thing. We did a, a lesson on tithing. My tithe, I look now at it as my response yes. for God blessing. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I used to look at, 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 at it as, let me give so God will bless me. And when you think about it, it's kind of manipulating. Right, right. That's manipulation. Right. Oh, if I pay my tithes, God will bless me. No, this is my response for God bless me. But be not deceived. Before I sit. <laughs> this was so good. After the eyes were opened. Adam and Eve heard God. Walking in the cool of the garden. Right? So this was their routine. God would come and they would walk with God. Yes, 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 yes. Just look what they're going to substitute it for, but that's not the point. You said it's Yeah, they could have been chilling out. In the cool of the. And with God. Might I add? <laughs> Boy, I tell you. Oh my God. When they heard God, they hid. Adam, where are you? We naked, so we hide. Naked? How you know what naked is? All right. Thank you. Who told you you were naked? All right then. I could drift. Adam and Eve didn't have to worry about clothes. They didn't have to worry about Macy's. Back to what I said initially. When God created them, he gave them everything they needed. Yes. Wow. That's what he did. Yeah. 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 The first thing Adam and Eve did was they had they hid. When I saw that this morning. Holy Spirit said to me, anything hidden needs to be examined. Go back to the beginning. So we are learning from the beginning. Even though Eve was deceived, she still obeyed, disobeyed an instruction. Yeah, we tend to lean on the deception of the enemy. Yes. And we forget that she still disobeyed an instruction, even a commandment of God. At that point, it was a commandment because the commandment. 
commandment was to not eat from that tree. And so whatever it is that you may question. Be accountable to what God said. That is what is important. What did God say? Yeah, I love my glory seeker family. I love my apostle. But what did God say? Yes, I trust our Bible teachings. Yeah, yeah, but I have to st study my word. What did God say? Because we believe God. Yeah, that came, and in this context, it was completely, yeah. 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 I mean, from a whole other perspective. In all of his fullness, in all of his glory, all of his power, in all of his goodness, all of his provisions, <laughs> we believe God. I believe that. Because I wrestled with this word. Up until 10 o'clock last night, I was like, oh boy, I think I'm be quiet. <laughs> but I was taught at an early age, if you don't hear God, you ain't saying nothing. And trust you me, if he didn't come through right about soon, I was prepared to message Apostle. Apostle, I ain't hearing nothing. God ain't saying nothing. So he must be telling you, or Minister Shadik must have the word, or Elder. But I was not hearing. I, I, I started to panic. But he came through. But I want you to, to believe today that this word not have, would not have come if there was not something that was about to test. So today I want us to be prepared and aware of the spirit of the deceiver. G.I. Joe said, no one is half the battle. So today we are armed. with what it is that we need from the very beginning of time to stand firm in the God of our salvation. We are prepared to stand on the word of God. Come what may. Our feet are planted. I shall not be moved. Glory to God. I don't know about anybody else in this house today. I shall not be moved. 
Psalms 1 says that I shall be like a tree planted by the rivers. I shall be, I am like a tree. I am planted. I am planted. Yeah, God. Can I get you to say that today? I am planted. I shall not be deceived. And I declare the word over this word today. Upon this rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Upon this rock, the word says. I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the word. The gates of hell shall not prevail against my feet that are planted. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the word that I declare. Screams of living water, and it shall not go. 
in desert. Jesus. 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 In every dry place, I declare war. Oh, I declare water, water. Oh, I'm so yeah. Even for somebody that is thirsting. Oh, God, somebody is thirsting. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God, we say water. Water. Let there be water. see the water spring yes, 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 yes. in dry places. Water spring in unexpected places. Water spring. Water spring. Water spring. We command it today that the earth respond to the word of God. Water spring. Water spring. In the name of Jesus. And I declare in this place no dry place. I prophesy to dry place. Right, please. 